and now let's get into the uh, understanding about remote repository and local repository so as we said so far we have seen about what are the changes we do only in the local repository right now we are going to talk about remote repository what is actually remote repository is nothing but remote repository is a particular uh, folder in the server wherever they are hosting it there are multiple uh, saas based uh, uh, git git applications are there let's say gitlab github uh, bitbucket there are multiple uh, cloud based service providers are there so if you choose any of the service provider you can able to create your own free account and then you can go there and you can create your own repository which means i think but you are actually storing your files and folders in somewhere in their cloud so git repository is nothing but you have your files in their cloud services and you are going to use it for your project use okay whenever you have your files or application code or any documents over there whichever you want to track it okay which means that can be uh, accessible by multiple developers using through internet so because of that whatever the repository is there in the remote which is not in your local machine that we call it as remote repository whatever the repository which you create in your local machine there is nothing but local repository first point second thing what are the files are there in the remote repository can be accessed by all the developers or anywhere anyone in the world by having like authentication authorization process established but if the file is there in your local repository until if you push that file to your remote repository no other developers can able to access it or no one from other machine can able to access your local repository files so this is the difference between remote repository and local repository so whenever you have file in remote repository you have a similar structure in your local machine right the way how i explained here right like this right so from remote repository you have to first take the code to your local repository like this okay so whenever you try to make it you have to use clone command okay so now what we seen here is from working directory you are getting into staging area and from staging area you are getting into local repository from local repository you have to push it to remote repository right that is ideal case usually all right so here what we are doing here is whenever you try to clone it it is there in your working directory whatever the change you do in working directory you stage it right with the help of add command whatever you stage it you are going to commit into your local repository with the help of commit command so once the code is get into local repository you are going to push it to remote repository wherever it is there right it can be accessed by other developers right that is how they we call it as a developer b can able to pull it so this is very basic uh, fundamental understanding about what is remote repository what is local repository now we are going to get deeper into how it actually works so whenever you clone a repository from a remote server so let's say you have this remote repository let's say you join a project and uh, the project is already there in the particular team okay so let's say they are using some gitlab or github okay and there is one project or a particular repository already there and now you are joining as a team member newly to the project and now you have to use that code to do some changes what you will typically do is first you have to take the code from to your local machine and then you start work on it right so for that what you have to do here is you have to understand how to clone the repository from remote to your local so whenever you try to clone the repository from remote to your local so git automatically remember what is the connection because see in the remote repository you might have n number of repositories but you are trying to take one particular repository to your local and you want to work on it now how does git knows or your local repository knows where to connect in the remote right so you have to mention it right so in that case what you have to do is git automatically remembers the connection but you have to establish the connection details which is nothing but in your local git you have to tell your local git saying that hey git remote in the remote add this particular repository on this url with some this allies okay this command is nothing but you are telling git that hey git add this particular repository whatever the repository in let's say in your in your remote let's say you have something called uh, let's just take uh, app 1 okay that is a repository name and it has some url right so what you have to do here is git remote add let's say red let's just take app 1 then url which means you are telling you are actually telling the git that in the remote there is a remote uh, repository called let's just take app 1 on this url and i am going to make this alias as something called origin by default it will consider it as a origin okay origin means something but it is a remote it is going to it is a alias to refer the remote uh, repository that's all 
so how you will make it is nothing but git remote add this origin for this particular repository in this url that's all it is just to give establish the connection between your local repository and remote repository there is no data change there is no branch creation nothing done now just you establish a connection between your local repository and remote repository wherein you will have something called git remote add this like origin now origin nothing but like it's just a remote origin like right? in the remote this repository you i'm going to refer going forward as a origin and this repository sits in this url that's all okay now let's move on to some basic commands so now what we did here is yeah now what we did here is we have our workspace so far what we did is we have our workspace red one two three four five files we had and we added to your index which is nothing but a staging area from there we actually commit to your local repository now whenever i want to push my local repository changes to remote server what i have to do is i have to push it i have to use git push command whenever i push it all the changes from my local repository will be pushed into remote server so remote repository and let's say there are some change in the remote repository which is not there in my local repository let's say i want to take that how i can take that there are two ways one is first of all i need to use fetch command what it will do is the changes from the remote will be fetched from there to here but it won't get merged into my workspace it will be waiting for me to do merge command okay but it will be getting into rep local repository after i fetch i have to merge it to my uh, workspace right so for that i have to give merge command okay this is one way other way is you can use directly a pull command what it will do is it will take the data from remote server or remote repository put it into a repository local repository as well as it will go into merge into your workspace you will see pull command is nothing but the combination of fetch command and merge command okay what is the other way you can able to clone that the latest data or the latest uh, uh, project from the remote repository to your workspace directly with the help of clone command so these are the high level commands we are going to use it in the upcoming uh, session but just for a uh, uh, sake of like local repository and remote repository to understand what actually does so these are these are the commands we use to uh, exchange the data from your local workspace to your staging area to your uh, local repository to your remote repository and get back the data back to your uh, workspace and uh, local repository